Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome. You are watching Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit to fill you up with hope. Today, I'm going to be channeling Mac Miller. Mac Miller is most closely associated with Ariana Grande. You know, that incredibly talented pop singer. You might have remembered her back in the day in the Disney Channel. She's growing into an incredibly talented performer and she has a lot of life experience in the short amount of time that she's been here on this planet. So whether you are a fan of Ariana Grande or not, we're gonna focus on Mac Miller. Now Mac Miller was a rapper and that's how I will consider him or that's what I will call him because that's my understanding. Now when he and I chat, he might share more in depth about his work and his life purpose and all that. But I'm talking, I'm talking to him because he made such an impact on Ariana Grande and her life in the last few years has been different. Now they were a couple at one time and then they broke up and she really tried to stand by him from what I understand during his turbulent challenges with drug abuse. And so he really impacted her life a lot and his death really left, left a lot of um, unanswered questions, unresolved issues and pain for her. So perhaps maybe in a beautiful, perfect world, you guys that are watching, Ariana can help, can be healed as well. So if you are a fan of hers, just lift her up in love. She's got a lot going on for her with all of the things that have been happening over the past few years to her and her life. Let's just utilize this channeling with Mac to inspire your spirit and also to uplift the energy of one another. And yes, your positive prayers, your positive vibes can support your favorite celebrities living here now as well. All right, so Mac, nice to meet you. He's like, nice to meet you. He's like, nice to meet you. He kind of, you guys, oh, so I'm kind of old for some of the people who would be watching this, or <laughs> probably uh, from Ariana Grande fans. I'm probably like your mom's age, okay? Um, I'm in my 40s, let's just say that. That's polite way to say I'm old uh, getting there um, he kind of reminds me of Eminem back in the day <laughs> I kinda, he says that's a pretty good compliment actually that's okay compliment it's like that's okay I'm okay with that I'm okay with that um, he's got a ton of tattoos the side of his head is shaved um, it looks like he kind of went back and forth with really short hair and almost like shaved it like bald um, I see some kind of tattoo um, on the ear, and I don't know if he's talking about Ari. He says, Ari, Ari, Ari. He loved her. Ari was the love of his life, he's showing me. He's got a lot, he's talking really fast, now. all of a sudden he's like waking up. At first he was kind of like, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, kind of, now he's like, <gasps> like almost like a little bit uh, panicked. Um, let's calm the energy down. I'm gonna actually ask an Archangel friend of mine to come in, Archangel Michael. You guys can do that too for yourselves if you ever feel like, you want to calm the energy down and feel protected and just have a little bit of a buffer. Like he's kind of like my bouncer, my spiritual guide bouncer. My Angel Michael comes in. He's like, hey man, it's okay, it's okay. And I don't feel threatened at all by Mac Miller as a spirit or anything like that. He just has a lot to, like he has a lot of incredible intensity and energy. He's like passionate about Ariana. He genuinely cared for her and he feels like um he's making me feel like he didn't deserve her like they were not um he said for a long long time we were like inseparable and he says but i didn't treat her right i didn't treat her right i didn't treasure her she is a treasure and again this is mac miller sharing whoa lots of energy uh his back hurts for some reason he's showing me between his shoulder blades like his back hurts and i don't know if it's a spiritual thing like that's where your heart chakra is and so my back is in a lot of pain i mean my heart is in a lot of pain he looks separate from his body. It looks like here's his physical human body. I'm looking at him from like a side profile here. Here's his physical human body and his back is like separate. Like almost like there's a disc on there that like literally you could just kind of. Oh, you know what it reminds me? Okay, so here's the imagery. So this is metaphor, you guys. That's how a lot of times when I get visual imagery, which is clair, uh, clairvoyant channel, the sight, the third eye, um, I see metaphor. And so he's showing me like almost like a... Um, like a, a toy or something with the battery back. Like this is the battery pack and you're opening it up, opening up the battery pack to recharge the batteries. And that's what he's saying. He's like, you got it. He's like, you got it. Uh, high highs and low lows. He almost feels manic, like bipolar a little bit. Like he swings, he's showing me swings. Now, Mac, was that because of the drug abuse or is that, is the drug abuse an effect of like other stuff going on mental health wise? Because now is a great time in the world that we live in 
the, where you, as an afterlife spirit, can share that. If there is a mental health awareness that needs to come through here, please, Mac, share that with us. He says, yeah, all right, all right, I'll, he says, I, I would be, um, you yeah, know, I don't want to, he says, he's really kind of lean and he's like really casual kind of, I don't know how to explain him. He's like sitting on a couch kind of thing, like a leathery couch and it's low, so I can't even mimic the way that he's sitting right now. He's got a hat on now, it's kind of turned to the side, it's turned weird to the side, it's not totally straight back, I can see part of the hat here, but it's kind of a little bit to the side kind of weird I don't know it's a lighter color too like a kind of a white cream or beige hat it means something symbolic and then he randomly says this is weird I have a random reference to Conway Kanye West I don't know what that's about random Mac Miller Kanye West if you guys know how they're connected or why all of a sudden I would just see like a little like a splat like a throw in the noodle against the wall and see if it sticks kind of thing <laughs> that's what it looks like Kanye West just a reference I don't know I don't know if it's a style thing or what, um, but he says, I didn't want to bother people with my problems. Like my problems are my problems. Like he shouldn't be like, he felt like he needed to take care of himself. Like I need to take care of my own business. Like other people get in your business and they, they're trying to like, they mean well, they might want to try to help you, but they don't know. They don't know what it's like. They have no idea what you're going through. He's making me feel like he had a hard time with his mother. And I don't know if his mom's actually in the afterlife or if she was sick or there's something about his mom or he feels like he made her sick. Um, there's some kind of sickness energy or feeling sick or not healthy in his the connection with his mom. So I don't know if he caused her pain or if she wasn't around and so that caused him pain, but there's something with his relationship with his mother. Again, if you guys know, go ahead and put it in the comments. Because we all know, let's repeat this together if you're new here at Above Life Channel, Bridget does not do Google. Why? Because Google defeats the purpose of doing a channel. If you could just look up the information, psh, why would I be talking to Mac then? <laughs> it's about the conversation, the dialogue, and what else? The energy. Gosh, I'm feeling better. Your energy does, it does balance, but I'm feeling like, I'm feeling more like you're in a spot where there's a better, like you feel better. Do you feel better? Would you say that you feel better? He says, yeah, I'm all right. all right, I'm all right. I can't say it, he's kind of like, a, he's using some kind of slang stuff. Like, yeah, I'm all right, all right, I, I, I can't say it, I, like that. Uh, I'm all right, I'm all right. Um, I'm getting the impression that he dealt with some really dark times in his head and um, almost a little Kurt Cobain-like, like monsters in your head kind of thing. But I don't feel like, so was it depression or anxiety? Because at first when you sat down, I felt like it was major anxiety, like, ugh. Um, but you're kind of making me feel like you were depressed. He says, drugs do that to you. He says, they completely alter your reality and they, they manipulate you into thinking you're something you're not because they got to keep you hooked. And it's the drugs and he's treating the, he's talking about the drugs like they're people almost manipulating them, but it's not people, it's drugs he's talking about that it gets into you and it just, messes you up um, makes you think that life is worse than it really is he said um, okay so again anxiety I could feel that and then I could feel but I feel like I can't tell if that's withdrawals like did you try to get clean oh yeah yeah I tried to get clean and sober he says both I tried to get very sober I could not he says you know for a while I could do one and then I couldn't do the other and you know, a drug is a drug. He says a drug is a drug, you guys. That's what he's saying. A drug is a drug. You're just trading off different addictions, you know. Um, and sooner or later, it just, it's just over. Game over. He says game over. He's showing me basketball. I don't know if he liked basketball or to watch basketball. He's showing me that. Um, he made a reference to Justin. Which one? There's two that I can think of, right? Bieber or Timberlake? No, Bieber. He says Bieber. No, you were right the first time because my thought was Justin Bieber and he's like, yeah, you were right the first time. I don't know if they were friends or they collaborated or something or if he's relating to Justin Bieber. I don't know. Not sure. Um, oh, because Justin Bieber is current events. Like he has some, he's been very open about his uh, mental health care and that he's been taking care of himself and that kind of thing. Is that what you're referring to? He says, you know, it takes, Mac says, Mac Miller, who we're talking to, he says it takes a lot of guts to be public about that, you know, because because people do judge you. And he says, I can stay with you, your career, you know? And there's a lot of fear about that. And so that's why uh, the pressure kind of starts you down this path to want to always be 
perfect. You know, he's like ser searching for perfection. I'm constantly searching for perfection, getting to be a better version of myself. And, and there's a lot of pressure in that. And he says, and right, you know, right. You want to make right by you and by the people that believe in you. And you put a lot of pressure on yourself. He says, I don't want people to think that it's because of other people that we, that we get addicted to drugs or that we make, he says, you would say poor choices. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. Thanks, Mac. He showed me his mom again. And I don't know if it's because he misses his mom or he, I remind him of a mom. I don't know. I really feel like I could probably be your mom. I'm probably, maybe not. Probably not. Okay, let me say, I am not quite that old, but I feel like, I don't know how old you are. You feel young, like mid-20s. So I'm not sure if you're 26, 27, 28. I don't know how old you are. I'm almost seeing the 30s, so I don't know what that's about. So in that case, then I couldn't be your mom if you're in your 30s. But, um... He's making me feel like, well, you understand because you just, you know, you accept, you know. He said, because that's what you do when you love someone. You just accept where they're at and you try to help them, but you can't help people unless they're ready to be helped, you know, willing. They got to be willing. And, and he says, I was willing many, many times, but then it just, it hurt so much. He said, it hurt so much. There's so much pain and you can't really um, escape that. You know, it comes back and he's making me feel like he's in this dark hole, like his head is just like so dark and it just overwhelms you. He said it's like a disease, you know, it's like cancer in the body, you know, and it's like in the mind and it just, he said it makes it dark, everything dark, it's everything dark. So what would you have advice, Mac, Mac Miller in the afterlife for other people that might be struggling with addictions or dealing with mental illness, mental health stuff. What would you say? Talk to me about mental health. What would you say for people who are dealing with this? He says, it doesn't matter what you're diagnosed with. He said, don't be afraid to be diagnosed. <laughs> he said, diagnosed, you know. He says, I know a lot of you, like, I didn't like labels either. I didn't want anything to do with that. But, you know, he says, it serves a purpose, you know. He says, I'm not saying what I, what I do or what I did, what I choose is right. And I'm not telling you what you need to choose or do for you. But he says, uh, if I knew different, I don't know if anybody could save me. He says, I don't really know if anybody could save me. I don't know what I could say to you to save you. That's kind of what it sounds like you're asking. I don't really know. It's not really... Yeah, this is what I'd like people to know. It's not really about saving people. You don't have to save someone's soul or save their life, their body. He says, it's a choice. Survival is a choice. And for some, it's tougher than others. That's just plain and simple. Simple as that. He says, simple as that. I'm not saying it's right. He says, not quite the PSA you're looking for. I'm like, I know, but there's so much that could be done. Could your life have been saved? He said, yes. He says, yeah. Yeah, my life could have been saved. If I would have chose something different, he says, but there's nobody to save me. There, you can't expect other people to come save you. You got to decide that you're worth it. You know, you got to decide that your life has enough meaning and value that you're going to save it, save yourself. He says, I think it's a self-pity that causes the oh my gosh I don't even know if I can say that out loud honestly he says yeah kind of leans forward like yeah like kind of challenging like can you do it do you have the courage to do it Mac Miller says um, You have to decide that you want to live. That's what's going to save you. That there is something more that's here besides the self-pity. He says suicide is an example of self-pity. Oh, 
defining suicide as self-pity is a really tough thing for me to do, Mac. <laughs> Especially on a channel where other people watch and listen. And will take to heart what you say. He says, yeah, slap in the face. It's because it's on you. He says, it's because it's on the people who are watching. It's on them. They need to be the ones that decide that they're going to pull themselves out of whatever darkness that they're in, whatever hole that they're in, and find light. They have to decide. He's like, you got to decide to do that. He's like, nobody can save you. You have to decide, he says. And he said, I didn't. And it's, he says, it's not a one-time thing. It's like a merry-go-round. It comes around and around and around. And you got to keep getting on and keep getting on and keep getting on. He says, you know, you got you to decide. You got to do it. He says, nobody's going to save you. It's nobody's responsibility to save you. That's on you, he says. So why did you kill yourself? I just wanted it over. I just wanted it to be over. I was tired. Tired of getting on the merry-go-round of trying to recover and trying to, you know, go to the brink of death and come back kind of thing because it looks like you've overdosed. I mean, oh my God, it looks like with enough of the toxic levels of stuff you've had in your body previous to your death, like for the last year and a half, two years before your death, maybe even three years, it looks messed up, man. Like you, oh my God, toxic levels. He says, yeah, I caused a lot of people a lot of pain. He's like, I died twice, you know, close to death twice or no pulse twice or whatever. I think he had did heroin too because I'm seeing like some kind of shot being given to him to get him to come back. Interesting. All right. Wow. All right, Mac. He says, you should look up my mom. Okay. I have no idea what that means, you guys, because I can't tell if he's just lovingly referring to her or if it, there's something about his healing or his life, the processing of all this that is impacted or affected because of mom. I can't tell if she's the, on the beginning, like the impacting it or the effect of it, like the aftermath of it is affecting her. I can't tell, but there's a, her, his mom is important here. Anything you'd like to say to Ariana? I love you, girl. She's my girl. He said, I love her. I love you, girl. He says, don't wait for me. You got no time to wait. And he says, I want you to be happy. She needs to be a mom, he says. She needs to get married and have babies and be a mom. He said she'd be a, oh, he's saying she'd be such a wonderful mom. Oh, she'd be such a good mom. Such a good mom. He says she's beautiful on the inside and out. That's what he says. That is beautiful. That's lovely to end on. Thank you very much, Mac Miller from The Afterlife. It was nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you. We've never met before. So if you guys are fans or you have interesting information to add, value-added comments are always welcome here in the comment section below. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching this video. Here at Above Life Channel, the purpose is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope because this is your life. It's yours. This is yours. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.